In drawing freehand sketches of grand architecture, there's really actually a surprisingly few principles that we have to think about, despite what can end up being quite a complex structure. And the three that I like to think of are proportion, alignment, and perspective. And in any one drawing, these may have varying degrees of importance. Now, this is the center of the front facade of Église du Dom in Paris, the church where Napoleon's tomb now is. And it's a, it's a magnificent building and we're close enough to the front looking up that we do have a, a vertical perspective. We do have the, the three-point perspective of the impression of the building narrowing as it, as it gets higher. And there's also foreshortening as it gets higher as well. Foreshortening is not just something that happens horizontally with colonnades and rows of windows, but foreshortening happens when we look upwards. And so the upper stories get narrower as they get higher. And things such as the drum that the dome sits on and the dome itself sits lower in the drum, apparently the lower down we see it from it still ends up being part of the arc of a perfect circle. The actual curve of a circle doesn't disappear with a dome, no matter how low down we see it. But we won't always see as much of it. What we do see, though, will always be that, that arc of a circle. I start with the centre-left column because columns, I find, are a better part of a building to get the right proportion for. And I find I prefer to space a colonnade, in this case, four columns across, not equally spaced, and to draw a smaller structure, working at, working at drawing it accurately and keeping the proportions in place. Once I've got that done, I can use that little structure as now a reference point for more. I find that when I do a freehand drawing of a large, grand, complex subject, if I box in the outside shape, if I define the area that the building's going to be in, with a pen, of course, I can't erase it. And what can often happen is then when I go to put the right number of windows or columns across or whatever detail there is, suddenly there's not enough space to fit them all in equally. And so I find that doing it this way, where I, in a sense, block out a part of it by repeating the detail, that I then establish a, not, a large enough section that I can use as a reference point. So there's, there's proportion. Now there's also alignment. And alignment is simply keeping things in a straight line that should be in a straight line. And this is horizontally, uh, vertically, or perhaps less commonly, diagonally. And so I, I look at this now and it's very annoying because that, that top horizontal line that we can see clearly is not horizontal. It slopes down towards the left. So that's annoying me. I like to blame the fact that I can't position my head over my paper properly and I've got lights and cameras and things jutting over the paper that, that stops me seeing things square on. But... Um, but for whatever reason, yes, that's, that's where alignment is not working. It's not in a straight line. But alignment more commonly, um, such as these columns, where the, the lower colonnade and then the upper colonnade of the porch have to align with each other. There, there should be a sense of a continuous line going up. And, of course, there's perspective as well. And in this case, there is that vertical perspective of from the center line, the vertical lines tilting in more and more as they move further away from that center line. And the center line, of course, corresponds to eye level, or you might hear it referred to less helpfully as the horizon when this is all turned horizontally on its side. But, but vertically, if the, if the photo hasn't been cropped, then the center line, the straight vertical line, should be straight ahead because it's in the center of the original photo capture. And so it was, it was actually tricky um, going upward line by line, uh, column by column, getting the perspective angle correct. 
Now you'll notice that with this pediment, I'm using my pen to measure the angle. Now we can do this technique even on location by just holding the pen in front of our eyes, aligning it with the angle and bringing it straight down. It's a lot more accurate than it sounds. And so this is not just useful for perspective angles, but it's useful for any angle, including the angle of pediments. It's very easy to get pediments too high. Now, that's even when we look at them straight on. But in this case, with the angle, the foreshortening, the pediment is actually compressed to, to be made um, shorter, not as high as it normally would be. So if we, if we make this pediment too high, it will actually give the effect that it's tilting towards us rather than sitting back on the vertical with the rest of the facade. And the same thing happens with all parts from now upwards. It's really important that we keep them tight, we keep them foreshortened, and we keep aligning the, the, the elements that align. So some of the elements on the drum align with the columns underneath. So, so that perspective angle has to go right through any vertical elements from the ground up to the dome. We also have to keep the, the proportions correct and particularly bear in mind foreshortening now because we're getting higher and higher in the dome. And we need to yeah, keep that perspective happening. So these sections here are, are a bit fiddly. It's, it's helpful, I think, with parts like this to look at the silhouettes as well, because it is a, it is a fairly gestural drawing all the same. And so we do, we do want to kind of um, uh, have, have uh, not so much perfect detail, but the overall effect being correct. And, and the silhouette counts a lot towards that. And now after this, I've got the, the tricky part of putting the, the um, drum in place. And again, you want to work really hard not to make it too high and then to put the dome on top. Now, I often have problem, um, a problem sitting domes on top of drums, making the, the, the dome too high, particularly when the angle is skewed a bit. So I tr try and make them a little lower than I feel like they need to be. And if you watch what I do here in a moment, my, my first l line which is aiming to be lower than it needs to be, I still think after I've drawn it is too high. And I was certainly correct about that. So fortunately, I established the lower line. And you'll notice how I was able to hide the line that I didn't want um, happily enough. So the, the point I often make that we shouldn't be too, too upset with our mistakes because we can often either hide them completely or at least make them less obvious by the end of the drawing. Now, I'm just doing these little decorative features. And now we have to position where is the dome going to go. So I'm trying to get a sense of the height in proportion to the things I've already drawn. So I keep referencing off what I've done. Now there's the line that's too high and there's the better line underneath it. Now I do mess up this right hand side of the dome as I often do. I just took it way too far over and now I've taken it even further over. What was I thinking? Instead of pulling it in tighter. Whatever arc I've drawn there for the dome should be part of a perfect circle. And that's the way we need to draw our domes. No matter what angle we're seeing it from, the actual arc doesn't ever flatten to less than a part of a circle. So now I've got some decorations on the dome, which is good because that will help hide the lines. And you can see now how I hide this mistaken line in the support for the little lantern they're called on top. Now, I, I feel like I've made that little towered section just slightly too high which again has the effect of it now looking a bit like it's leaning forward. Now, and this spire on top is actually in life really tall so and thin. So it's really important to not let it be too tall in our drawing or else again, it will have the effect that it's falling towards us rather than sitting back. I don't know why I did those lines because I haven't actually centered my drawing on the, the original four dots I put to reference the corners of the image, which is something I do just to help me keep a sense of proportion as I draw. 
And so I, I should have just drawn up to the edge of the reference and then just drawn on the other side and not put any lines around it. So yeah, anyway, not a huge problem. So I'm coming to now just some of the detail, which is now quite easy to put in because I've established for this lower section, the, the proportions, the height, um, I've got a sense of the widths of things. So I've just got a couple of windows to put in a few, a few more columns to form some detail with these enormous slender doors that sit in the front. And just then also working out what am I going to do with hatching for this. I decide that I will keep my hatching uh, as I prefer to do uh, vertical hatching for all of the vertical walls. You notice with these horizontal surfaces that we, we can see because we're sort of looking up under the entablature, I hatch those according to the perspective angles that, that we see. And I find that is a really helpful way, a really visually satisfying way to, to hatch some surfaces. And I'm, I'm doing the same up here under the entablature on the upper level. But for the vertical walls, I'm using vertical hatching lines and trying to use them to define those outermost columns away from columns behind or from the, the pilasters that are behind. So now I think I better get the rest of this building done. But these further back elements, I want to draw them with a, a bit of a looser, lighter touch because they are sitting further back and that just helps give the sense that the, the portico, the porch area comes forward and the walls, the wings are just a bit further away. There's a couple of statues there that I do very gestural drawing the effects of, which is the way I like to draw statues. And now we just have some of the, the detail on the lower section of the church. It is, I think, a magnificent building. It's actually built adjoining another church. And so it was a, a church that was built for war veterans who were hospitalised and needed looking after by the state. And this was built so that this was where the king, um, Louis the Fourteenth or maybe Louis the Fifteenth could come and join his soldiers who were in the poorer church adjoining where they were. So this basically was just for the king and his entourage to join the um, poorer folk in the adjoining church for a service. But it is a magnificent building. It's got magnificent decoration inside. And of course, the lower level has been exposed now with Napoleon's sarcophagus being on display there. And so... Yep, trying to work out how I'll represent the, the painting, the decoration on the, the black doors, the white paint on the black, uh, the gold paint on the black doors. I'm trying to, trying to show those. And then it's just time to put a few, a few people in for a sense of scale. It is such an enormous building. It's good to have some people relatively close to it to give a sense of its size. And then these, these front steps that we have. And then, look, it's pretty much it. There's, there's just one part that at this point I've just overlooked. But fortunately, I do see it before we get to the end. But So this is a freehand ink drawing I've done by working out proportion of some uh, initial parts I draw. That's the bit I almost forgot. And then paying attention to what perspective angles are needed and then working hard to align all of the things that actually are aligned, that need to be aligned. This photo is on my channel community page, so you can have a go drawing it if you'd like to have a go drawing grand architecture. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. I hope you found this interesting. Give it a go. It's not perhaps as difficult as it looks once you get into the flow of things because it is all very ordered and structured and all lines up. Once you've drawn a little bit, it sort of falls into place. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.